We are going to create a bucket from within the Python programming language. Amazon has made a package called Boto3 that allows developers to perform certain tasks from within code. While we are using the Python package, there are packages written for other development languages. For those who might be wondering, the name Boto3 originates from a freshwater dolphin that lives in the Amazon. We have the documentation and we're going to search for Create Bucket. Create Bucket has all the functionality we have seen in the GUI. The main difference is that rather than clicking buttons, filling in text boxes, and doing actions using the keyboard and mouse, the SDK interface will have actions done through code. The API is telling us what we need, what is optional, and following the API, we can then develop the solution accordingly. If we go into the AWS console and click on S3, you will see that we have one bucket defined and we're going to create another. The code defines the bucket name and the region where the bucket will reside. In our case, it is EU West 3. The code imports a number of packages and it has one very small function in which it establishes the client from the Boto3 library relating to S3. It then sets the location and finally invokes a method within Boto3 to create the bucket. The method returns whether the bucket creation operation was successful. If the bucket was successfully created, the code prints a message and returns. Otherwise, the error is logged and we return false. Let's run the solution. We get a message that the bucket got created. If we now head back to the S3 management console and refresh, we can see the newly created bucket. When we go into properties, we see that it is in EU S3 and the bucket name is the one we have defined. The takeaway here is that using an API Amazon has provided, we can manipulate certain objects from within code. What are the benefits over performing the same operation using Google? The most obvious benefit is that the SDK allows the solution to perform certain actions on the AWS ecosystem. Take, for example, this Python code. If the code needs to create a bucket for some action that will follow, it can do it directly from within code. There is no need for a person, for a DevOps, for a user to manually create the bucket. That in itself should explain why we use SDKs. Another benefit is that text, in our case, code is constant. And comparing this to a GUI, we know that text will work consistently. To adapt this code to create a new bucket in a different region with a new name, one has only to modify the two lines at the start of this code. Further refinement could be written to handle an error condition and once written and tested, these improvements will benefit all future bucket creation operations. Amazon can and in fact has modified the GUI. Whilst SDKs evolve, they do so while remaining backward compatible. Documenting text is also more efficient and easier to follow compared to documenting GUI screens. What are the limitations of an SDK? If we are using an SDK to just create buckets, we will discover there are more efficient tools to do so. Using a particular language to 
just perform base functions on Amazon's ecosystem carries certain risks. As we discussed, we're going to look at more neutral ways to invoke this AWS S3 API.